Hello and welcome to the State of the Fleet Industry, a weekly video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine. I'm Mike Antich, editor of Automotive Fleet, and today I'd like to examine what's occurring in the fleet industry for the week of November 8th, 2021. And as we all know, there's been an ongoing shortage of automotive parts that range from headlights to wiring harnesses to seat foam to glass to components with embedded electronics. And it's not just the microprocessor shortage that we're experiencing, it's much bigger than that. Today, we're witnessing a wide cross-section of automotive parts that are sporadically in short supply that vary from types of parts to the make and model of vehicles. But the net impact is that these part constraints on average are causing some repairs to take much longer to complete, sometimes more than 30 days if you're waiting for a needed part to arrive that's on back order. The bottom line is that these part shortages have lengthened fleet vehicle downtime, increased fleet costs, both hard costs and soft costs, and have negatively impacted employee productivity. And the part shortage has become even a greater issue as we've witnessed a 3% increase industry-wide in expenses for unscheduled maintenance during calendar year 2021. And these supply chain constraints are not just a U.S. problem, it's a worldwide problem. And as I said before in past reports, if you want to analyze how external forces are impacting the auto industry, you need to look outside the auto industry for answers. So here's an example, a study by Sea Intelligence, and Sea is in ocean, uh, S-E-A. So Sea Intelligence is it's a preeminent industry research company. It's based in Denmark, and it solely focuses on the maritime industry, and it's one of the leaders in the field. It's reporting that 13% of the world's cargo shipping capacity is now tied up in delays. So why is this significant? Well, since many auto parts are nowadays manufactured offshore and shipped to the U.S. by container ship, these shipping delays are a key reason for the parts constraints that are occurring in today's automotive industry. And one of the key revelations of the COVID-19 pandemic is that it's exposed the fragility of global logistics systems. And it's also exposed the vulnerability to just-in-time manufacturing that's been adopted by the auto industry in the US over the past 40 years. And the reason for this vulnerability to just-in-time manufacturing is that a shortage of just a single component can bring an entire auto plant to a standstill. But you know, this isn't a new revelation. We've known about this for a long time, going back to 1996, when the UAW strike of that year targeted a single GM component plant that brought all other assembly plants to a standstill. And as we're getting ready to start a new year, it doesn't appear that any of these supply chain constraints and bottlenecks are getting better. In fact, if anything, they appear to be getting worse. Some people in the logistics industry are actually starting to refer to this period as the great supply chain disruption. Now, admittedly, that label might be a little melodramatic, but it does truly summarize what's happening in today's auto industry. A growing number of observers in the logistics industry now foresee these supply chain issues extending deep into next year and perhaps even into calendar year 2023. So in addition to the impact on the automotive industry, these supply chain bottlenecks are much more widespread and they've caused other shortages among a wide variety of consumer products, ranging from household goods to food, raw material, to even patio furniture. Try buying patio furniture nowadays. With the global supply chain stretched as thin as it is due to ongoing strong consumer demand and unprecedented cargo volume, people are starting to express concern about merchandise availability during the holiday season. And shippers have anticipated this, they've thought about it, and they started shipping their holiday merchandise much earlier than normal, but it backfired. It backfired because all it did was simply add to the existing congestion. The volume of cargo entering U.S. ports is unprecedented, and it's causing shipping costs to increase. These additional costs are being passed on to end users, such as Fleet, along with others. So, for instance, 
on average, PERP prices have increased 20 to 30% now. Now, admittedly, much of the price increases are due to higher commodity prices, but higher transport and logistics costs are also contributing to these price increases. But the real issue is not cost, it's, it's the shipping delays that are lengthening the time it takes for automotive parts to reach the US. And the current lead time for products from Asia to reach inland US destinations can take 100 days. So what's causing these supply chain constraints? I believe there are six key reasons why this is occurring. So one, there's a shortage of shipping containers. The production of shipping containers is not keeping up with the end user demand for merchandise being shipped in these containers. This is especially the case in China where there is a tight supply of shipping containers and this is slowing shipments out of China which in turn is putting limits on their internal production. So reason number two, there are logistic log jams in every major container port in the US. So despite the shortage of shipping containers, the volume of containers entering the US is at historic highs, which is causing congestion at ports because they can't ship the containers out of the port facility fast enough. On any given day, there are half a million containers stacked around the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, half a million. I live here, I see it every day. These containers are everywhere with many of them stacked one on top of the other, piled five high, which is the equivalent of a five-story building. These stacked shipping containers slow crane operations as operators now have to sort through them to locate the needed containers when a designated truck arrives for its specific cargo. Reason number three, container ships are getting larger. New container ships are being built larger than ever, which takes more time to unload them. These mega ships can carry as many as 24,000 containers. So on average, today's container ships are about a third bigger than yesteryear. So consequently, they're taking about a third longer to unload. And to give you an idea as to the size of the new generation of cargo ships is that they're larger than the U.S. Navy aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald Ford, which is the largest naval ship in the world. Also, due to the size of today's container ships, they can only be serviced at the largest ports, eliminating the option to divert some of the traffic to smaller ports because they can't accommodate them. So reason number four, warehouses are near at near full capacity. Since 40% of all container shipments from Asia arrive in the Los Angeles and Long Beach harbors, on any given day, 98% of the warehouses in Southern California are fully occupied. So even though you're able to unload the containers at the port, you have nowhere to ship them until warehouse capacity opens up elsewhere. And another problem is that the warehouses themselves are struggling to hire enough workers for warehousing jobs, which slows their throughput. So reason number five, there's a shortage of trailers or chassis as they call them to haul shipping containers. So demand for trailers and chassis to haul shipping containers is exceeding current production capacity in the US. But the majority of these trailers or chassis are made in China by a company called China International Marine Containers, also known as CIMC, that's based in Shenzhen. Recently, the US government issued tariffs on chassis produced in China after it was alleged that it was unfairly selling these chassis below market prices, which ultimately threatens to increase acquisition costs. That is, unless the Chinese do not look to absorb the cost of these new tariffs. Reason number six, port authorities are regulating access to port facilities. I don't know if you realize this, but truck drivers need to have an appointment to pick up and drop off containers at the Los Angeles and Long Beach ports. This is a huge bone of contention with logistics companies because they constantly have to check port websites to find out when appointment slots to pick up containers are available. And they face restrictions also on the types of trucks that they can operate at port, port facilities, which limits their cargo transportation capabilities. But another issue is order to delivery times, and I'm concerned about this. You know, these supply chain constraints threaten to impact order to delivery times, especially for vehicles that are transported by rail. And many new vehicles are transported by rail to either um, an upfitter or to the end uh, dealer where they're going to be prepped and delivered to customers. 
So not only are port and warehouses congested, but so too are rail yards. And I've seen published reports and read reports where rail yards are so congested that trains have been backed up for 25 miles waiting to load their cargo. And it can take an average of five hours just to enter a Chicago area rail yard. And the railroads are operating under hours of service just as are the truck companies. And with these kinds of long waits just to enter the rail yard, there's the potential risk of uh, rail crews actually maxing out their hours of service, requiring a replacement crew to come in to, re uh, to replace them. So another risk um, with rail car congestion is that it could tie up locomotives. And I think that's the real uh, Achilles heel. These locomotives um, are tied up there and it delays their availability to haul bi-level or tri-level rail cars, which are used to transport vehicles. In the final analysis, these supply chain constraints will be very complex to solve. Um, but the reality is that even if no more ships came to the US. If we could wave that magic wand and make that disappear, it would still take months to clear out the current backlog. So the bottom line is that these shortages are not going away anytime soon. So with this as my final observation, I'd like to conclude my State of the Fleet Industry presentation for the week of November 8th, 2021.